Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We went to movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. What are you doing out here? Well, what am I supposed to do? Deal from your have to. My my what my, my what? What are you? The have to. Are you are you speaking English? The have to is what you use when you're afraid. Okay. Okay, you got it. Listen to me. Okay. Everybody is half win and half lose. Okay. The lose half is afraid. Right. The winning half is fearless. Fearless. Right. The have to is inside. It's where the fear lives. Oh. Okay. Okay. Could you start over again? Oh. Let's play ball. I have to. Let's see it. I have to. What the heck was I talking about? What the heck was he talking about? So what'd you tell him? You wouldn't understand. Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Sentence Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about movies that shape their childhood. I'm Sweetie. And I'm Sweetie. Guys, big news. I'm 35. What? It happened yesterday. <laughs> I feel good about it. Um, I had a nice day. Didn't do much. The weather was shitty. But Sweetie and I here went to a really fun dinner at night and got dressed up and just, you know, did Sweetie stuff. And, like, it was really fun. Um, but now I do look a day over 35 because I am. <laughs> <laughs> what? And that also means it is the end of the Sweetie birthday week, which also means end of my Sweetie choices for this week, which also means it was time to watch... Rookie of the year. So why'd you pick this one, sweetie? Yeah, fucking, I don't remember. No, I remember this movie really fondly. I'm pretty sure I saw it in the movie theater. Mm. I would have been 10. So I feel like this was like, and the kid in this is 12. So this was like my like age group like movie to go see, let's say. Pretty sure it came out probably like in the summer. Uh, and I thought this kid was cute. He's like totally in my type, guys, which was basically like like little like whip smart little whippersnapper kids with brown hair and brown eyes. And maybe missing a big tooth out and, of the side of the mouth. And maybe missing you know? a big tooth on the side of his mouth. Um yeah. Henry Rowan Gardner Gart Rowan Gardner. <laughs> it's a Rowan Gartner. Yeah. Is adorable. Yeah. Um he's that actor whose name is Don't something, know. something something. Uh who was in American Pie. Mm-hmm. And something else. Yep. So he grew up and did <laughs> grown up semi kind of things. But as a little kid, I had a huge, huge, yeah. huge crush on yeah, him. He's super cute. And I like, you know, this was also like so many of the movies coming out for kids at the time, which we've covered a lot already, were these sports movies. You know, kids, either like ragtag group of kids doing stuff, or in this case, a kid thrown into like the adult, hmm. old adult like leagues. Um, Not a lot of girls playing sports, though. No, no, exactly. So it was like a lot of movies like this were out and they were very entertaining. And I just remember this really fondly. And I had put it on our list like when we first made our list like years ago. That was one I just like was remembered so fondly and put it on and we just haven't had time to do it. um, Or I couldn't convince you to do it. Um, So I was like, fuck that. It's my birthday. I'm doing Rookie of the the Year. They gonna watch Rookie of the Year, bitch. What do you remember of this, this film? I remember as soon as Sweetie said, "Let's, hey Sweetie, let's watch Rookie of the Year. I said, well, I'm already a giant ball of nervous anxiety thinking about Daniel Stern getting caught between those two hotel rooms. Uh, that scene is so stressful <laughs> that I can't, I, I have a hard time living with life. Yeah. Like, it's tough. The, cl- um, the claustrophobic level is like a 20. Yeah, it's like, it's whoa, bad. whoa. Um, but that's really the main thing I remembered from this movie. And originally, I kind of confused it with Angels in the Outfield, I think. Totally, I'm totally. always like, wait, that's the one 
a rookie of the year is when he has like the crazy elastic arm and Daniel Stern gets stuck in the hotel room. Right. Between I mean, the hotel rooms. Let's remember there were really like three main baseball movies at this time for kids, right? So you had Sandlot, Check, We Did It. Um, this one, <laughs> rookie of the year. <laughs> and Angels in the Outfield, which we have yet to do. So those were like kind of the three big baseball movies that I remember um, and all really good. Mm. I really, really enjoy them. And my feelings on baseball now, and we'll talk about it at the end, are pretty like snoozeville. Like I kind of hate baseball. But as a little kid, like, I don't know, it was definitely the sport you were like most, for, for us anyway, the most professional league sport that like you were introduced to more and was like a really big deal, right? Would you yeah. say that? Like so, we weren't into basketball or football well, or our anything like that. Our mom loved yeah. baseball. Yeah. So that's Carol loved maybe a that's lifelong why. fan of the Red Sox, yeah. that Carol. So that's probably what introduced us. But that was like the most approachable game to go see. So we yeah. would see Red Sox games too. Our mm-hmm. grandfather was a huge Red Sox yep. fan. Like we would have hats and stuff like that. So yeah, I guess we were just like a baseball <laughs> we family. Have hats we would and, stuff have like that. and I played softball. I was a Henry Bauman Gardner or whatever. <laughs> Uh, I had an Andre Dawson glove. Yeah, or you did. I think it was yours, and yep. then I took it because it said my name on it. Yeah, um, those were my. Yep, yeah, those were the, the heyday. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So I remember the Daniel Stern getting caught in the door too, and obviously like the basic plot. Here's some stuff I did not remember about this movie. Ready? Mm-hmm. Directed by Daniel Stern. Who would what? remember that? It's his only movie he's ever directed. Random and like not bad. Like you know, it was kind of like. You know, I would say a B movie for a good three quarters of it. Last quarter, I mean, let me tell you something. I did not think I was going to cry at Rookie of the Year today. And man, did I. <laughs> Waterworks. Oh, my God. <laughs> the ending was so it. cute. You lost it at oh the God, end. The ending was adorable. Ugh. Other thing I didn't remember, John Candy is in yeah, this? What? Question mark? Uncredited, first of all, which is like, Wait, what? how does that work? What is with the uncredited I don't know. Why stuff? are we doing that? I don't know weird uh but when he popped on the scene i'm like john candy's in this what and didn't he die kind of soon after this yeah because was that cool was running cool when runnings? we did cool runnings yeah. we were like this was like one of his last movies yeah 93 i feel like cool runnings was 93 or 94 yeah so um yeah he didn't look too bad no, though. not as bad as cool runnings yeah um yeah i forget when that was when did we do cool runnings anyway um yeah so didn't remember that um, and then I didn't remember the cute ending, but I'm not going to reveal it yet because it was like a fucking shocker. It was like I'd never even seen this before. That's how excited I was about the ending. I was like, what? It's dot, 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 dot. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yep. We'll get to it, folks. We'll get to it. <laughs> yeah. And then it, the character arc for the, the what happens with that reveal in this character, just like, wow, just completely changed, changed the ball yeah. game. Changed the ball game for Whoa. me, guys. Um, but yeah, so I felt really good about it. This was a great cap off to my birthday week and a little nostalgic childhood baseball film. And I'm happy we covered it. All right. Yeah. Good, 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 good. All right. So should we play ball? Let's play ball. It's time <laughs> for the sweetie synopsis. Yeah. Sweeties. Funky butt loving. Um, Henry Rowan Gartner is a 12 year old kid who is not great at baseball, but he wants to play anyways, because his mom always tells him some like weird story about his dad was a baseball player and she wants him to be a baseball player. So, yep, Interesting. His, his dad is, uh, d- is it clarified whether he has died or divorced Very and, unc- and tell you, doesn't see him? Uh, unclear. I'll tell you what it is. It's not clarified at yeah. all because we don't know anything. We don't know if she told him that he died, he left. I don't know. He my just, first, my impressions was that he died. Just the way they talked to, about too. him so wistfully. But I now was I'm like, not oh. sure. Now I'm not yeah. sure what she told. What the hell she told him? Um, anyway, so so Henry tries his hardest. Um, he gets made fun of at school a lot, which causes him to break his arm because. Somebody like throws a ball and he goes and tries to catch it and falls. I looked away for a second. His arm yeah, was yeah. broken. So, so I forget um, the details. Yeah. So he gets uh, thro- the kind of bully. Or it's the kid on the team who's like kind of mm-hmm. a jerk to him. He's like, hey, Rowan Gardner, catch this. And this crush girl that is that he, the girl he has a crush on is watching. And he's like, oh, God, I got to catch this ball. I got to catch this ball. And previously he did not catch the ball in the actual game that he played in. And so he's trying to like make up for that. Right. Mm-hmm. So he runs and it's all in slow mo and the kids are like, "Whoa, get the ball!" You know, it's all that cool mm-hmm. like slow mo kind of stuff. And there's a baseball on the ground and he slips on it. 
Why is he like, always, why are there always baseballs I know, on the that's, ground? That's, why that is he always my, slipping like, on what's baseballs? What's going on with baseballs on the ground? Like you see a baseball, if I can pick it up. Yeah. No, I'm joke. Mm-hmm. Um, so he slips on the baseball and uh, his body just like literally flies into the air and he lands real hard on his right shoulder. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's broke. It's broke, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. So he goes to the doctor. He puts it in this like medieval cast that is like with his arm raised as if he's doing driving what signals. What is that sign? What's that driving signal sign? Turning right, right turn. Right, right turn. turn. A right turn signal out the window is what he has to wear all summer. And I just don't, like I've never seen a cast like that. I'm not clear whether <laughs> that is a real position you would put an arm to heal in. I don't know. I mean, no wonder it healed weirdly. Yeah. Like, hello, Who's doctor. This bozo, doctor. So he, that is the summer. He finally gets it off, and his arm's a little weird. The doctor's like, huh, well, it seems that the tendons have gotten a little tight in that cast. Yeah, like fused with the bone or something? It's yeah, it was It was sketchy. Weird. So now he can, like, whip his arm really fast. Yeah. And, and he, like, hits and when, the doctor. When, the, when his arm moves around, it's like this, it sounds like a rubber band yeah. being pulled back. Like, that's the tendon, right? And then when it's released, it, like, makes his arm, like, flick so fast that uh, initially he injures the doctor. But come to find out a little later, he now has a new skill. Yeah. So his mom buys him Cubs tickets um, as a present. For getting his cast off, which I'm like, girl, save that money and buy a car that's not a raper van, first of all. <laughs> She's a florist. She As, needs it. Uh, does she? <laughs> for deliveries. Can get a nicer van. <laughs> like, it's just like really bothered me. Did you put that in your, your 90s references? No, I didn't. Raper van? No. We <laughs> I know. I miss, missed opportunity. Uh, but she gets some Cubs tickets, so he and his friends go. They go to the game. The Cubs, at this point in history, are terrible, and they just can't win any games. There's barely anyone in the crowd. Um, the all the star pitcher, the rocket, is um terrible also, and just keeps hitting homers and stuff, throwing homers. So the ball goes in the stadium, and the thing to do, I guess, is throw it back, throw it back. Which I don't is that like a yeah? Thing? I've never heard of that. So if uh, uh other team, so it's like a home game, and you're in the seats, and you're a hometown fan. The ball comes, a home run is hit by another team into the stands. You're supposed to throw it back? Whoa, didn't know that. Never seen that done at Fenway Park. Maybe I haven't been watching because it's boring, but um, new to me. me. Yeah, I just don't think that's a thing. And also, I want to keep the ball because that's exciting. I know, and they were excited, and then they had to throw it back. They had to throw it back, whatever. So they gave it to Henry to throw it back because they catch the ball, and he like, his arm does like the wind up thing with the the scary elastic band noise and he whips it and he throws it all the way to home. The catcher catches it and strikes. Oh no, the runner's safe still, but I'm, I think they should have gotten him out. Like what is the point <laughs> of having him be safe? I don't know. A little bit of a letdown, but anyways, it makes everybody be like, Whoa, who the hell threw that? So the man, the owner of the Cubs is like, give me the person who threw that. They find out it's a kid. They're like, huh, that's kind of weird. Well, we still want him, even though I'm not sure that's allowed either. How can you have a 12-year-old child? Time out. What are you going to say? Sweetie history. Yeah. So my first question in this is like, how old you got to be to play in MLB, right? Looked it up. The uh, the restrictions now is you got to be 21. So you have to have graduated high school at least, I guess. And then... Because um, you have to have been... To be drafted. Drafted, yeah. I mean, it just doesn't happen that way. There's not these, like, freak incidents. However, the record for youngest player to have played is 15 years old for the Cincinnati Reds in 1944. Now, this was because during World War II, much like in a league of their own, they would have other, like, adolescents and young kids because all the baseball players were in war, right? Mm -hmm. They were, like, Mm -hmm. drafted in war. So they would have this special case where they would have young kids, like, actually be on professional baseball leagues. So that was just, like, the one kind of the youngest record, but because of that circumstance. So, again, the rules are 21. Uh, In 1993, um, rules were still 21. So not allowed. (laughs) Sorry, Henry. Nuts. Sorry, Hank. Sorry, all the boys, little boys out there who <laughs> broke their arm, arm on purpose to try to <laughs> get a rocket arm as well. Yeah. Um, but cool concept. And it's interesting that they don't even, because I was like, when I, I was thinking about this, I was like, oh, they must have found some loophole in the law. And that's like, well, I, like I remember that being a okay. scene. It's not. So <laughs> people make a fuss about having a pig in a sheep herding contest and they're not making the fuss about the 12 year old in the baseball league. Right. Like, what? 
Um, lame. But anyway, so the Cubs recruit him. He's on the team. <clears throat> it's a big deal. Um, he he's on the Cubs now. It's crazy. Yep, he's like you know. in. He's like in constant awe. His face throughout the entire <laughs> rest of the movie is just like open, like. Wow! I think that's how that guy got cast because he like kind of has these big brown Give doe us your eyes. Best surprised face. And he's just like excited uh, face. Okay, you look excited again. <laughs> and he's off. so sweet, but he's also like such a kid. Yeah. And it's it, it's that kind of dynamic of like a kid in an older person's world and how like they kind of play with that yeah. a lot, which was funny at first and then got like super annoying for me. But that's just my bag. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. So he go. So he's part of the team. He meets some characters. We've got uh, the manager. Wait, the manager? No. Who's the guy who is that? Comes to his house the as the manager. Yeah. Okay. Um, forget his name. What's his name? We don't know. Manager. Uh, we got weird Daniel Stern character whose name is Brick Brick Bricker Bricka. That sounds right. <laughs> Uh, very weird. Not character. big on names here. The only one I remember is Henry. Gary Busey's. <laughs> yeah, and Gary Busey's, which is Chet Stedman. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's, it's like a baseball player. I know. Name. It's like you sit around a table. You're like, all right, everybody, think of a good baseball yeah. player's mm-hmm. name. Chet. Um, but yeah, so this that's the team, and he joins it. He gets like what looks to be ten minutes of practice, <laughs> and then the next day is the game, and they put him in because the crowd's going crazy. Like, he's not even a pitcher on his like little league team. Right. He like literally has no pitching like, skills other than his amateur pitched? one yeah. that maybe his like mom tossed the ball around and helped him with or yeah, something. It was weird. So like put him out there, and you know what, guys, he's terrible. Who knew that a twelve year old with no pitching experience? Who could actually who can throw the ball really fast is not good. Yeah, imagine it's like, that. Just because you got the speed doesn't mean you have the skill. Exactly. Isn't pitching all about skill? I would. I think. mean, there's certain throws. You know, they're like do a curveball, do a knuckleball, whatever. Like all those things, and you have to know how to how to throw those. Yeah, exactly. Like what? So, so listen, learn. It's kind of dumb because they act all upset, like at him. And they're like, you didn't even give him any pr- like practice or training. That of course, we know of. he's gonna yeah. be bad. Yeah. Yeah, so they're like, all right, um, Stedman, like, get, wait, Stedman? Like, yeah. Oprah's yeah. boyfriend? Yeah, okay. Stedman. Um, <laughs> now I'm just going to picture Oprah Stedman <laughs> instead of that. It's pretty great. Um, Chicago, whoa. What? Um, so they get him to coach Henry and to, to be better, and then they start becoming um, kind of friends, I guess, or like mentor. Like, he didn't like Henry at first, I would say, but then yeah. he kind of like froze on him. They have I'm, this, not, like, I'm not I'm not going to be a wet nurse for this kid. Yeah, what? That's like that's a sweet now. term. Um, <laughs> so, Henry tries again. Let's try again. Let's do it again. Uh this time, first person like hits the ball. Uh, nuts, okay. What can you do? Second time, he throws a perfect strike. I think he's got it. Mm. By George, I think he's got it. Um and then he's just on his way basically and and the Cubs have now become exciting again and people go to the games again and everything is great. Right. And cuz that was the bit, so this came at a perfect time because you find out that the Cubs there's like uh the old man manager uh old man owner and then his like is that his son? So uh, Tully from uh from Adam's family and also Cher's dad, the actor who seems to be in everything. Yes. Dan Hedaya. I don't know how to say his last yeah. name, but that guy. Yeah. Um, you know, craggy face Dan Hedaya. Um, he's like, he's always like the evil businessman, like shyster guy. <laughs> yes. So he's like, try, he's like, if we don't sell out every home game for the rest of the season, like we have to give up the franchise or I don't even know how that business works mm. or whatever. So this like came an opportune time that like they have this uh, person that everyone wants to come see. So they do sell all the tickets. So like Henry's winning, they're winning games, and also they're getting people's butts in the seats. So it's like everyone's winning. Side plot. His mom is dating this like super sketchball creepster named, what is his name? Uh, Fuck. B- uh, Bill? 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 No, I don't know. I, don't, and, um, I just made that up. And like <laughs> he's just gross. And the mom's so cool. And you're like, what are you doing with that loser? But basically, he's just like, again, like a shasty business guy who like sees opportunity in this okay. kid and wants yeah. to be Henry's manager. And in the beginning, he's like, she's like, guess what? It's our three week anniversary. Three weeks? Give me a fucking break. Like you don't even your period's not even three weeks long. <laughs> it's like, what? Hey, I know a lot of people do that. Just kidding. <laughs> Dates like, these days, if you get three down. three weeks in a row, that's a big deal. Okay, but he's like giving her jewelry. I don't know. He's well, a he's a creeper. Yeah. So he becomes Henry's manager. Um, they basically make a deal to like behind his mom and Henry's back to get him sold to the Yankees for like twenty five million dollars. 
and it's like this big thing like oh you just gotta get the mom to sign the contract and you're like oh how are they gonna get her to sign that contract i bet it's some diabolical scheme and then he's just sitting next to her and he's like hey can you sign this it's his contract and she's like <laughs> sure and she just signs it without reading it i'm like mary come on yeah, mary lo- low moment for mary um <sighs> also side plot henry being this baseball world so he's like kind of getting to do all stuff that like celebrities get to do so he has to do photo shoots and they put him in like the ray charles pepsi commercial and he's doing basically getting thrown into this adult world and he's like kind of misses being a kid so then there's a rift between him and his friends because he's not they had this boat they're supposed to paint and like make and they can't he can't do that because he's doing all these adult like sports responsibilities and he's also trying to set his mom up with Chet Stedman because Chet Stedman becomes like a father figure to him because he doesn't have one, right? And that's kind of like where their relationship ends up going. And then he's like, well, like, let's get them together with my mom. So that is like slowly happening as well. Mm. So a lot of things come to head at the what ends up being the divisional playoffs you know, like you know how baseball works. Is that what you call it? There's divisions. The divisional playoffs. Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's like divisions in baseball. Different. Um, well, it's like National American leagues, but every one of those leagues has like a division. So it's like Northeast, Southwest. You know, ge- geographical. <laughs> And um, so there, the Cubs are in the division baseball by divi- sweetie divisional playoffs division. I think it's just division playoffs with um, the New York Mets mm. and then the Chicago Cubs. Mm. So it all comes to a head in this one. You know, so it's a play, it's a series. So it's the last game of the series, and if they win this, they're going to the Super Bowl. I mean, the World <laughs> Series. The <fuck>? <laughs> oh my god, so embarrassed. Um. So what happens in this big game? So the big game, Stedman pitches, and then this whole time he's got like a bad arm that's just getting worse. And then finally, and he's doing a really good job, but then his arm totally just fucks up. And he's like, I'm done, I'm out. And they're like, fuck. So they're like, send in the kids. So Henry goes out, runs out to the mound. Wouldn't you know it? There's a fucking baseball on the ground. Who didn't pick up that baseball? I would like to know who that is. I mean, I guess I've seen baseballs get like left Stedman? there, though. It was probably, but... I'll tell you who it was. It was the pitcher of the Mets who was trying to like, you know, pull a Maybe. fast one and sabotage but, Henry. But also like Henry was like running out and this is like his gay little run. And he like looks back. <laughs> <laughs> he has a funny little trot. i will just say that. And he like looks back and he waves them. And he's like, yeah, we're going to do it. So he also kind of like wasn't looking and then took like one step and like slipped yeah, on the so ball. So he does the so same got exact thing that yeah. he did in the beginning, except instead of breaking his arm again, which you'd think would happen, he just knocks his arm back to like what it was yep. originally. So now he doesn't have the he doesn't have the heat. Um, but so you know what he has? He, what does he have? The smarts. He's got the smarts. He's got the smarts. Well, I wouldn't say smarts so much as like sh- um, shysty. <laughs> How many times can we use that word in this podcast? Did we already say shysty? Three times. <laughs> Who else was We used shysty? it to describe the Dan Hidea oh. guy. <laughs> used it to describe the creepy that, boyfriend. That's why it was in my head. <laughs> no, this that's... name, this movie should just be recalled Shyster of the Year. <laughs> of the Year. Yeah, um, he is like a little scammer. Yeah, so he basically comes up with all these like things. Which reminds me of Little Giants, where they like, okay, we're not going to win based on talent. (laughs) Let's do these other secret shenanigans instead. So they do like a pretend thing where he's like, pretends he has the ball, but it's really the sandbag. And the guy at the first base tries to like, he's off the base. And the first base, I don't, I don't understand how that happened. I missed the beginning, but I was like, is this legal? It doesn't seem like yeah, it. Yeah. Um, another one, he like intimidates the first place, the first base player by doing the, the old Taunt, chicken. Taunts him. Taunting. Say. That's what it's called. He does, you know, the bok bok, you know, Marty McFly's <laughs> bok, Achilles bok. heel. Because he's trying to get um, him to steal. Yeah. And he does, but then doesn't throw the ball. So he gets him out. And then the third one, this like giant baseball player who was in the beginning and he didn't have much luck with, comes up to bat again. And it's the last one they need to get out, and they're having. He's having a hard time with it. Uh, he's just kind of. What, what happens? He's sad. What? What? what yeah. What well, he just he's to... ran out of like little games to play, so he's like, I right. don't know how to get out of this. But like he, he knew I he got... always needed three. Why didn't he come up with three shysty shysters? Well, but wait. So he does. <sighs> Because it's okay. So the last guy who comes back up to bat is this giant, gross ogre of a player from the New York Mets. And like when he first faced him, when he first ever played, and he was like such a jerk to him. And he's just like, Where's your mama? Like, I'm going to hit the ball to your mama. Like, 
I eat fastballs for breakfast. And he's just like so gross and mean. So he's like, shit, like my arch enemy is like this guy and I have to fucking face him. So he throws one ball and I forget what happens. How did he get the first strike? It's a foul, something, a foul. A fa- one yeah. is a foul. I forget what the first one is. So he only needs one strike left. But he really like can't throw over the mound. Sorry, over the plate. He's not, he doesn't have the strength anymore. So he's just been like intentionally walking people. So he's kind of being like, ah, oh, kind of crap. How am I going to get out of this? How am I going to get out of this? And he like looks at his glove and there's like this weird piece of tape in it. And he untapes it and it says very slowly and it's revealed to be M A. R Y for Mary, who is his mother. So it is revealed that this like great player that he's been like, you know, trying to become because he thought his dad was this great player. The dad he never met was his mother. His mother was the baseball player. That's her old glove. And it was just like the most sweetest little moment of this like single mom who obviously like could have told her son like, oh, wow, I'm, I used to play like mm-hmm. softball. I'm really good at it, blah, blah, blah. But she wanted this father figure and to create this image for him, you know, being a single mom. Oh, my God, I fucking lost it. I was like, Mary, what? <laughs> and so then he looks at her and realizes like, oh, my God, you're the great player. And she like mouths to him. She goes <clears throat> like, float it float it and he's like ah like that's how I'm gonna beat this ogre guy so then he like winds up and he floats it you know which is essentially like big arc (laughs) and the guy is kind of trying to figure out how to hit it and he ends up swinging and missing swinging a miss and they get the strike and they win ah rush them out Henry you did it you did it you did it Um, so yeah it's all exciting happiness and then cut to Henry now playing back in the little league or whatever and Stedman is now his coach probably his dad they probably he probably married his mom. yeah I thought I saw a wedding ring on his I finger think I, I think yeah. I saw one um and then ends with Henry like putting his he- hand up to the camera and he's got a world series champs like ring on it so apparently the Cubs world the won the world series which as we all know is not true <laughs> because they to didn't win until go back and put recently. money on the cubbies <laughs> right this isn't 1986 okay <laughs> Um, oh no, no, wait, wait, this isn't 2000. Whenever it, what are they, 20? Yeah, right? Yeah, 2015. Oh, yeah. right, because they missed 85. it, they missed it by one, yeah. one year for yep. reals because they actually won in 2016. Right, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Um, so, so that's it, so that's the end. Um, again, really sweet movie, really picked up. I was a bit of a snooze fest in the middle, yeah. and then I think it really picked up at the end. Um, good you know those sports movies always have sort of that final game kind of a thing yeah which is like we've talked about like the league of their own one like so good right like um pretty much like every baseball yeah. movie every every sports movie every has sports this movie. like final game thing so th- i think this one's done really well and has that nice nice sweet reveal when you just realize really it's about like his relationship with his mom and this and that and then he gets to go back to real life as a kid because i think like a couple themes for this movie right so you have the and i tried to google this like kids with crazy talent movies it, like trying to think of like what those are because I feel like that's a little bit of a trope where like some kid has this crazy ability and then he gets thrown into a world that he's like not used to kind of a thing. Hmm. And I like did the list and it was like all over the map. I was like, this is not what I Googled at all. Google. But I can't um, think of any other ones. Yeah. It's I just thought that there would be more. And I think once I, if I saw the titles, mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, oh. But mm-hmm. anyway, I think that's kind of a trope. And then also it reminded me a little bit of Big with the kind of don't grow up too quick sort of theme because like that's really important and when he was like there's this scene where he like is supposed to do a photo shoot and he's like fuck this like I want to be a kid and runs off and goes and like with his friends to go on their little motorboat like in the lake and they go pick up some girls and they're like having the best time and it's just like kids having fun and I was like yeah and I was like you be a kid and you take that time and like you just love it because you know what life is not gonna get better (laughs) yeah it does in a way but it also gets it's just you're never gonna have that carefree life so like don't and that's the thing we've talked about before like kids always want to grow up because you think like oh you don't want someone telling you what to do all the time and this and that but like I wish we could. I could go back to myself and be like, "Don't wait to grow up because it's hard. It's hard being an adult. is hard." <laughs> yes, but I don't think we talked about this another time. It's pretty great, also. Right. Um. So, but my so my one problem with that trope, I guess, in these movies is like when somebody gets 
either like fame or is good at something and then kind of leaves their friends behind and their friend gets all like mad. I was kind of annoyed by that scene on this because I was like, hello, he's a major league baseball player now. He's not like he didn't choose to not yeah. come and work yeah. on the boat with you. I don't know why they threw that in there at all. It didn't make I any didn't sense. Think he needed it. And like, then they made up within like yeah. 2.5 this seconds isn't like after teen, being like, I hate you. Yeah. This isn't like <laughs> Teen Witch where you're like, you forgot about me and now you're because you're popular. Like he didn't forget about them. He's they still were his only friends. Kids with crazy talents. Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. <laughs> because he became a wolf. That's not fair. Um, Why? It's like breaking your arm and having your bone uh, in your that's ligament. That's true. And it's funny that like it's not like his talent in this isn't like real. Like a real talent. Right. I, well, I liked how they made him like a horrible baseball yeah. player. And I forgot. I wrote that Me down too. that I forgot. Happened. I thought he was decent. I too. thought he was like a decent pitcher. Yeah. And then he just became like Me too. better. But he was actually, he stank. Hey, he was, was bad. Like he should not hey. have been playing baseball, period. Oh, yeah. The beginning scene, he's like. Like, oh he's in the outfield. The, the ball gets hit. It, he misses it, first of all. His hat, like, falls over his eyes. Instead of picking his hat up, he, like, leaves it there and is, like, searching the grass like a blind man. Like, where's the ball? Where'd it go? Here it is. Still doesn't pick his hat up. Swings around in circles. Don't know why. And then just chucks it over the fence. <laughs> It was like the saddest thing I've ever and seen. And that also in my was, life. It doesn't fit because the Henry from that first scene is not the Henry who's, who's clever and has street smarts and stuff later on. Right. So it's like, why, why did he think of those? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's that, a little, they just made him a little yeah, too dopey like, in the beginning. Really? I need to show him how yeah. terrible he is. Right. Um, I guess because it it's just so crazy yeah. that he would be able to yeah. like play. But even when he like goes back to being a kid and has a regular arm and everything like that, he doesn't. He's not a pitcher. Like he's in the outfield again. Yeah, that's true. So it's interesting. They didn't like. Mm. He wasn't like, wow, I learned so much pitching in major league baseball you know. that I would be like a pitcher in little league now. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. For in sure. Some interesting narrative choices, Daniel Stern. <laughs> let's just say, I'm not behind you 100% yeah. on those but overall I think you did a good job directing this movie there were some really exciting parts it was adorable um, a little too kitty in some parts for me but it's just yeah, with like the felt, lingo I could feel you losing it with the uh when he was like neener neener oh, neener I hate that stuff it's almost like kid the kids are like dumb thing I'm like I know he's 12 but like I just don't think kids act like that I'm sorry do they Maybe. I mean, we don't. Right. Like, go to like a, a mall or whatever on the weekend and I'm sure you'll think differently. Yeah. And this movie is, I mean, I don't know if Daniel Stern like had parts in writing it, but there were definitely like all this sort of like lingo and sayings that I remember from the previews and like the whole thing. So the, fir- the one that I remember and then when it came about, I did crack up was the funky butt loving part so the doctor when he gets like smacked in the nose when it first reveals that like uh, Henry has this skill and he like kind of smacks the doctor in the face so, like when his arm does like the recoil, recoil back. Um, and so the doctors, instead of swearing, he goes funky butt loving and his friends are in the, the doctor's office with him and they're like, did he just say funky butt loving? <laughs> I remember that being like such a thing from this movie and people would say that all the time instead of swearing and stuff, which mm-hmm. is like cute, but like not that funny 25 years later. Mm-hmm. Um, give him the hot stinky cheese so that i felt like got repeated like Ugh. so much and it just wasn't funny it anymore wasn't. and it just it wasn't funny the first time it just didn't make sense that's what some, most of the humor was in this movie for me it was really adorable and most of it was good but some of just the little sayings i was like this isn't funny yeah. um what was another one? Oh, i do i remember this one from the the uh previews anyway Pitcher's got a big butt. Pitcher's got a big butt. So again, like Henry's like a little scammer when he like finally makes it on base. They have him hit one time and he makes it by getting hit by the ball. I guess he gets hit by the uh, ball. Thing? No, uh, no, he he gets he oh, walked. He, he gets walked because the strike zone's all messed up because yeah. he's so short. So he gets on base and like instead of being like, sweet, I got on base. He's like, sweet, I'm going to like taunt the pitcher (laughs) and try to steal and but nah. And he does that on like every base. And it's like, dude, shut up. Calm down. Simmer down. So that's when he says the pitcher is a big butt thing because he's like trying to get the guy to throw him out. I don't know. It was a little that part was a little cheesy for me. Um, What else? What else? Give him the hot sinking cheese. I eat fastballs for breakfast. Um, that guy. So we're the the mean guy from the Mets, who 
is a dick in like giant. Sweetie and I were like, is he in some like is he the voice of something? He just seems so familiar to us. Yeah. And maybe he was just because he was in this and we remember him from that. But yeah. then I was thinking of it just now, hearing his voice. And you know who he reminds me of is Big Mike from Say by the Bell, the college years. Yeah. And it's see that. but it's not him. But it, I think that's who I thought maybe it was for a second. Um so that's maybe why we thought that. But He's not. He's only been in like four or five movies. So disappointed. Disappointment yeah. of the century, if you will. <laughs> and there and there is okay. And then sorry, I'm just going through my notes now. Remember the part when in the cafeteria? So there wasn't like super sexually stuff. I mean, there's some like when the mom's dating the gross guy and they're like he sees them kissing and he makes all these faces. Yeah. But that part in the cafeteria where they're describing the hot girl made me really uncomfortable. Oh my God, so uncomfortable. I forget what they said, but they no, he, basically, she goes, yeah, he, he grabbed goes, his chest and made like a boob, th- a boob sign, except with his fingers pointing, pointing out, out like, like nipples. looking that she has boobs. And she goes, she's stacked. Yeah. And then, she's 12. And oh I didn't see that she had breasts no. at all. <laughs> and they're like, milk did her body good. Yeah. And I was like, why is that even necessary? Like, why do we need that in the movie? This is the reason why we have so many problems with like men, um, uh, uh, the, objectifying yeah, women objectifying <laughs> women's bodies and being like yes this is okay I'm like when would a 12 year old learn to talk about women like that I mean From I get this it, movie it's like locker room <laughs> talk I guess which is coming to a head now or like this is so inappropriate and like I don't care if it's just you and the guys like don't talk about women like that it's gross but she was 12 yeah. it wasn't like she was even 16 and in high school and they were in high right. school when you're kind of thinking about that stuff and people actually have bodies yeah. like it was really weird. like maybe one girl had boobs when we were 12 but like it wasn't that girl it was me but like were you stacked Andre yeah I was <laughs> worn a bra since third grade what up um haven't changed bra size since just kidding I did because I got fat and that's how you get boobs but um <laughs> don't get breast implants just, just get, get yeah, just gain weight yeah. um so yeah that part was super creepy um, so I want to talk about Daniel Stern for a little bit because I have a love-hate relationship that is Same. mostly hate. Same. Um, I put Daniel Stern, not funny, question mark. <laughs> so there's like two different kinds of Daniel Stern. Right. There's like uh, there's like super creepy and then there's kooky. And this movie is like the kooky meter is up to turned up to 11. He's yes. just, just like, I'm going to be the kookiest person in the world. And it's exhausting. It just, I don't understand this character. What was his role? Was he a, player no he was a pitching coach and then they saw him being the batting coach too but like and the, the, guy the coach it. makes it a joke make a joke i he's been following me around since the minor league i don't know yeah minor leagues there was or like something. some explanation for why he was still a part of this team i did not understand it but he's always doing weird shit and then he gets himself in these weird predicaments so the hotel room door one we talked about so there's this thing where and then i don't see this in many hotel rooms anymore but there used to be sometimes like so. connecting doors yeah. And so his room was next to Henry's and then the door behind him shuts and he's the door to Henry's room is already locked. So now he's stuck in between those two little doors and you just the camera. There's like a shot of him from above where you just see how much little space he has. And it's so stressful. It's like the most stressful thing that's ever happened to me in my life, except for watching people getting like buried alive. It's just like, (laughs) I mean, he should have been dead. Yeah. He would have died. That's the thing. There's no, there's not enough air in there to survive even maybe a couple minutes. So that was weird. But I think his, he was supposed to be like the comic relief, the like slapstick kind of comic relief part of it, which you didn't really need. It's not like, I mean, the whole thing's kind of funny and there's that character at all. It's like they just, he just wanted to be in it, I guess. That's what it felt like to me. And it was painful. And like he always gets locked into weird places and he's giving him like this weird advice. Again, like not funny. This one part where he was like, so like, so he comes off the mound, the game's over and Henry's like, Henry, like some guys like to ice their shoulders. Others like to use heat. But I have like a solution to the problem. Like hot ice. (laughs) He's like, hmm. And he's like, hmm, okay. hot ice. And you could see, like, even in the movie, it was like crickets. They're like, oh. <laughs> well, I wonder, like, if we went back in time to in the movie theater, like, did kids laugh at that? Right. Probably. It's probably but, that, that, like, ha ha, silly, funny. Right. right. So this is not my, honestly, like, the only Daniel Stern I like is the Home Alone one. Who, yeah. And he's also a little kooky in that. Like, kooky right. meters, like, maybe a five, right. six in that. But yeah, and then there's little monsters, Daniel Stern, which is creepy. And like, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, mean dad. Mean dad. Don't like it. 
Uh, I can't think of any others. But is he in? Is he in City Slickers? I think he's in City Slickers. I haven't really seen that all the way through. Where is he now, though? Where is where is he now? Where'd he go? Where'd Um, he go? Yeah. So I kind of wish he had stayed in the director's chair for this one. Don't think he needed to cast himself in this or really had that that character at all. Um, Also, and I think we mentioned this or not, but Gary Busey is in this. Very well put together, mind you, and so with it. I was like, wow, this must be before his like tragic accident where he got brain damage. Sweetie said he was in a motorcycle accident. Um, but it was after. So yeah. interesting. I know. I was surprised. And he was well. really good in this. He was. He really toned it. Like he yeah. wasn't crazy at all. I was so confused about it. And then that, that got me thinking. And I was like, maybe he didn't get fucked up from the motorcycle accident. He probably just like took too many drugs or something. Yeah. And that's why he got fucked up. I don't right. know. Yeah. No, he was, I mean, he was like essentially like the romantic lead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're putting him together with weird. the mom and they were like actually kind of a cute couple and like whatever. And he ended up being like a really good little role model for Henry. Like when he gives him, you know, he helps him on the mound. He gives him this little like pep talk, which like really doesn't make sense, but it like helps him anyway. Um, And then when Henry comes back to his locker, he had like signed a baseball and like put it in his jacket. That was sweet. That was sweet. That was pretty sweet. Yeah. And then then at the end, he's his little league coach. He gives up his dreams of coaching the major leagues to be a coach of the little leagues, you know, as you do. Um, Yeah. Do you think that the unofficial theme song of this movie should be, I will be a father figure? Yes or no? Yes, I love that. I lo- I, maybe it was in the credits. We don't even know because we, <laughs> we never sit around for the credits. Um, what did you think of the uh, trope, let me use that word again, of the coach never remembering Henry's name and calling him something new every time? Because that ran through the whole movie, yeah. though interesting turn at the end when he finally gets the name right, and I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what do you call him? Like, so I was writing down all the different names he called them. I know. Well, it's a weird. Yeah, it was. It was funny just because the name was like a funny thing every time. So like that was pretty funny. Hello, son. I'm looking for Henry Rulinfurter. Ravenboozer. <laughs> Rosenbagger. Warm up. You're going in. Garden hoser, ruling grotter. I never doubted him for a minute. Hey, way to go, run a mucker. I wrote I down my favorite. I don't know ones. why, like, he couldn't remember. I think that's kind of rude. Um, <laughs> rude. Especially if he's like your star player, like, get it together. Get I, it together, I wrote down coach. my favorite names that he calls okay, them. Ready? Go for it. Rabin Mooser. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, R- Rosenberger. That's not that funny. Ronan Gruner. Jewish, yeah. My favorite one, run a mucker. It's <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty good. Run a mucker. This is okay. You're up. You know what? This is now. I'm thinking. I think this. You were modeled after this man. <laughs> what? Because, like whenever. Remember when you couldn't remember <laughs> Short Round's name yeah. in Temple of Doom, and you like came up with all these alternatives? It was basically you. Well, much like this movie. Um, that's kind of like a bit I have now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You know, it's all revealed. Um, if I make a mistake like that, sometimes I think it's funny just to keep making the same mistake. Oh, there you have it. Right. So, yeah, I right. understand that joke. <laughs> there you it's go. one of mine. Good one. Good one. Good one. Um, I would like to talk about some super 90s things yeah. in this movie. So that's so 90s. Uh, number one, Trolls. Uh, yes. One of the merchandise. Can we talk about trolls? Yeah, I mean the merchandise in the beginning. I'm gonna set up the troll first. Yeah. The merchandise in the beginning of this movie is a bunch of trolls with like a Cubs jersey on, which was such a '90s thing, right? I'm pretty sure they don't sell trolls any longer mm-hmm. at baseball games, um, but trolls were oh, the my shit. God, we, they were they were our beanie babies. I mean, I mean, we and still our, had beanie I had beanie babies. babies also. I was twelve for beanie babies, but that was my beanie but baby. Yeah, trolls we went nuts for, and we had. We had a lot of trolls, and we had a lunchbox. Troll lunch lunch bag. It was a bag. It was a bag bag. with trolls on the front, and then we would put our (laughs) trolls in the lunch bag, so it was like trolls and trolls. I had troll books. Um, 
we there were some so there was Pencil like two topper. kinds of tro- yeah there were two <laughs> kinds of trolls there was like the seedy ghetto trolls right. which like i don't think were real trolls no, those were sold like the christmas tree shop yeah. and they weren't as and cute they, they had, didn't have the cute troll face yeah they had gross like clown yeah, hair that got like hair. dirty really yep. easily but then there were the real trolls the norfin norfin trolls. trolls were the real ones which had the jewels in the, the belly. belly button mm-hmm. that's how you knew guys that's i how only you knew had a couple real. of those i know we almost had that's like, true and they, but they were nice ones you had the cop troll the cop troll i had the clown troll which i don't love clowns but that troll was pretty yeah, cute we i i had definitely more off-brand trolls than the norfin trolls but i definitely like my norfin trolls better i had remember this my ballerina troll doll I that i got for my birthday the in troll first with the shoes that barely fit no, on and always like, fell no, off this was you had the troll like the figurine troll but i had like a stuffed animal doll oh. troll that i got for my birthday like kindergarten or first grade and i brought it to school like i opened the present that morning at breakfast and then brought it to school. I loved it so much. Wow. Oh, I love that. So what was your favorite troll other than that one? Other than that one? I can't see it. Like, I, can't, I, I remember the trolls that you had. I can't remember mm. the trolls that I had. Do you remember? Okay, if I tell one. you what my favorite one okay, was, are yeah. you going to remember this one? Probably. So being a lover of little things, <laughs> I love, like, things that are really small, and I just think that's so cute. So my favorite troll, it was a Norfin teeny tiny one with pink hair hard plastic body it was like a mini one she was my favorite okay what was her name did you name I her i don't i don't think i yeah named i don't think i named mine either I named oh them. i just remembered one of mine i had uh the wizard troll with the orange hair that was a great that was one. my troll that yeah. had the hat and the but purple w- do you remember what we did with them would we like incorporate them with all of our other things to play with in our play world so yeah. barbie's trolls little pet shops so. like it all be in the same like kind yeah. of play time okay because that's what i remember pretty sure pretty sure but i remember like taking my little bag out and taking them yeah. like all out and, looking, and, then I have and just to, like, like looking at yep. them <laughs> i'd have to like pack them all back in and there i remember <laughs> this is like such a sweetie thing but like you kept yours so neat and like you never took off their outfits and like did anything but like I did like I don't know what the fuck I was doing with my trolls but their hair was all like matted and like shitty I'd like change the clothes on the, yeah on I don't the skins know and everything. but yeah you were always like so careful with your toys not me not mm-hmm. me guys so that was that was 90s thing Good number call. one uh, number two and sweetie called this out because I didn't know what it was called but you knew topsy a topsy, topsy tail. tail yep so the mom was rocking a topsy tail in the beginning so if you remember it it's basically you know, like such a ripoff because you can do a topsy tail yourself without a little gadget. It's really not that hard. But in the 90s, they sold this device to make your own topsy tail. And then they had all these different like different variations of basically you're just pulling your ponytail through the bottom. So it makes like a looped over like roll kind of look. Very cool. Very 90s. You don't see those a lot anymore. Yeah, Sometimes I back. just do it and I'm like, nope, just doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dated nuts. hairstyle. Like, why did you bring them back? Um, number three, Pepsi being the best thing in the world. So this was definitely like an 80s, 90s thing until people realized that Pepsi is the worst. And we're like, just kidding. Coke is still the best. I don't know what happened in the 80s that made Pepsi such a big deal. And it continued into it the, the 90s. Advertising. It was the yeah. Ray Charles, like the piano yeah, thing. Right, I, think right. they had, Michael I think Michael Jackson yeah. did something. So they Pepsi was like ads. a huge thing. There's like Pepsi cups. Um, like at the games instead of like now they're all Coke cups <laughs> but this was like Pepsi cups with Pepsi in it you're like whoa um, scrunchies I spotted a scrunchie yep. our favorite which uh, we called boofies go back to our episode <laughs> on Shoot, I forget Shit. that was awesome that was a good one my girl? I got in no, trouble for know. having a, a business a boofy illegal, business illegal boofy business in school <laughs> Carol oh, was my man. supplier <laughs> I'm pissed. I can't remember what that was. That's such a good one. Well, we're, we'll think of it. Maybe working girl. I don't know. Um, I was so, a working girl. Yeah, Ugh, that was good. Uh, Game Boy. Woo! Love Game Boy. Henry's playing a Game Boy in the locker room. Good times. Good times. And I love how Chet's like that'll rot your brain. And we always talk about how video games. Yeah. I'm like, you know what else will rot your yeah. brain, Chet? <laughs> Drugs. <laughs> Gary Busey. Gary yeah. Busey. Um, and then this one, Bum clothes which yep. was what bum was it called equipment. bum equipment <laughs> did that stand for something i don't know i was just gonna ask you that should we google it i feel like we're being unfair to bum but that was like the thing like everybody had that it yeah. was like bum kids what was like a spree a spree uh, um, which i could champion? never i never understood what a spree champion sweatshirt oh man that was like i thought a spree thing. was like a spirit like i never got it never oh, understood that false. Um, but yeah, those those were the days, man. Yep. And there was a good scene where they showed several vintage chip bags. Yes. Yeah. 
Yep. Frito Lays, not just Lays. It yep. was Frito Lays. Cheetos. Cheetos. Ch- Chex. Old Chex mix, mix bag, which was like yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Um, I love old bags, but nothing tops the old Doritos bag for me. Whenever I see that, I'm yeah. just like, oh, totally. Ah, Doritos. Yeah. Good times. Definitely. Definitely some good, good 90s stuff. And also, what about, I don't know why I put this in the 90s section, but the good... <laughs> The guitar riff to show intense pain. <laughs> <laughs> I hurt my arm. <laughs> be like Chet Stedman, like his arm goes out at the end and like to show like, and then he like can't, he tries to throw and he's like, ah, oh. and he like grabs it and it's this like guitar riff like, <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. It was an interesting guess, choice. Yeah, Daniel pretty Stern. 90s, pretty 90s. <laughs> um, any other 90s things we left out? That's all I wrote down. Yeah. That's okay. So embarrassing confession time. <clears throat> the L.A. Dodger hat has always been very confusing for me. I, up until quite recently, I want to say, oh, like a month ago, didn't realize that the L.A. Dodger hat was that blue hat with the L.A. on the front. I thought that was an I and an A, and I thought it was some weird team in Iowa that everybody secretly loved. And I was like, why is everyone obsessed with this Iowa team? Like, what is going on here? Iowa. Wow. I don't know. I thought it was like a college team. I don't know. But listen, guys, I think that we could make that L a little more pronounced. It, okay. it still looks like an I to me, and I have a hard time with it. Um, but it, I'm pleased to know now that that is not Iowa whatever team <laughs> is the L.A. Dodgers. So now Iowa I'm in the know. team. You know what? I don't think they do either. But I just thought in my head like that that made sense to me. I was like, why does everyone love that fucking team? Weird. So that's my embarrassing confession. Ta-da. That's embarrassing. Yeah. Tell me about it. Anything else? Any cool baseball memories? Um, okay. So let's end on just um, some thoughts in general about baseball. Thoughts. Baseball thoughts. So we talked about how we grew up as a very baseball family. So like oriented in like my mom, you know, I don't think dad was as into it. Definitely was like mom's game and dad would watch, but he just like wasn't a sporty guy. He enjoyed watching sports. But he fell like, asleep usually. Yeah. He just like wasn't that into it. So we went to a lot of Red Sox games as kids. Um, again, had the hats, <laughs> had a jersey. Mo Vaughn. Who remembers Mo Vaughn? Oh Love Mo Vaughn. Vaughn. was my favorite. Yeah. So very, very cool. Um, once I got to Boston, like... And actually, we were really good, and we, like, won the World Series right when I moved here, almost, like, 2007. So that was, like, a really exciting time. And then baseball, for me, just went complete, if this is a bar graph that I'm showing you, complete slope down. Yep. I'm just, like, not into it, and I find baseball is boring as fuck. And I've gone to games, and it's, like, fun, but I really only like going games for the drinking. (laughs) It's a fun atmosphere. You're outside. You're drinking. The energy is really cool. Like, I love going to see games and the stadium experience. The actual game is so slow and boring. And it can get exciting, but it's usually at the very end if it's, like, really close and they're down to the wire and there's only one inning left and there's two balls and whatever. Um, I just wish baseball was, like, a little bit more exciting to me. Hmm. It just isn't. Um, that That's... That's I think what it's I think. Mostly about the experience. Although I'll tell you, I hate the experience. I last time I went to a game, which was like a couple years ago, um, I forgot how close you are to everybody. <laughs> like you're in this, you're like crammed into this tiny Let little seat. seat. It's like hot and sweaty. It's gross, and people are constantly getting up and pa- going over you. So you have to do the whole like, okay, everybody yeah, up, and like pass by. I'm like, can you just fucking get? one beer maybe and like drink it like why that's do why we, you have to get drunk because you gotta ten. like put up with like all Ugh, the it's all so the annoying stuff. i mean and it's then, about like consumption of lots of it is it's about drinking it's about eating a lot even though you're not hungry it's just like that whole experience and when they were showing all the montages of all the people getting ready for the game and going to the game and getting all the stuff and eating all the cracker jacks and all that i kind of got excited because like yeah that's fun that's fun so there is like that <laughs> part of it that i do really like um want to hear my favorite baseball oh story my God, yes do you know what I'm going to tell? Um, ice cream in the baseball hat? No. Okay. Don't know. No, I do love those. <laughs> the ice cream sundaes. Yeah. A little mini hat with ice yeah. cream in it? No. Okay. Senior year of high school, oh. we did a what is a project graduation cruise, which is to keep kids from not drinking and driving on graduation night, even though you're 18. <laughs> um, you know, they know kids get into trouble. So they're like, let's do a cruise around Boston Harbor. 
with all the kids so no one gets drunk and we're all together and everyone's safe. So it's this big overnight thing. There was raffles. And guys, I won the raffle. And I never won anything before in my whole life. So it was so exciting. And it was the big enchilada. It was Red Sox tickets for me and eight of my friends and a limo ride up and back. Like amazing, probably the best like great. gift I've won, great or guys. raffle I've ever won, still to this day. So I get my friends together. We get in the limo ride. We're going up, and uh, I guess we're probably about at this point twenty minutes from Boston, maybe. maybe we're in like Quincy, and limo. Uh, oh, okay. So first, <laughs> forgot this part of it. So we're like all fooling around the limo and just being like silly, and we're like you know we're not even drinking. I don't think we were even drinking. We're eighteen again, and um. My friend were like dared doing dares and stuff like that. So we dare my friend Reby to like stick her body out of the window and like flash the next car. So my friend Reby, God bless her, is like not really like a big chest. <laughs> so she does it. And then some like the person next to her is like pointing and is going flat, flat. You have a flat. And she's like, oh, my God. Like they're making fun of my breasts and I'm flashing you them. You dick. Oh, no. We actually had a flat tire. <laughs> So we pull over and our limo driver was this sweet old man, but really like was very nervous and couldn't handle it because he goes to the back to get stuff to change the tire and we end up not having a jack. We have a spare and he gets so stressed out that he ends up peeing his pants. So we're like trying to figure out what to do. And we see this like water like running down the guy's leg onto the sand. And we're like, what the fuck is happening? Sand? Why is there sand? We flag down these two women who luckily have a jack. And then my friend also like got weed off of them. I remember it was like this crazy <laughs> fucking thing. They were these like, he's from like Rochester or, or somewhere. Um, Dorchester. Rochester. Like Rochester. Where's Rochester? Rochester? New York. Dorchester or like something like that. So like, we get weed from them, and then we also get a jack, so we get the tire. We get to the freaking baseball game at, like, the seventh inning stretch. <laughs> we missed literally the whole game. But it ended up proving, like, to be an amazing story that I would tell, like, till the day I die. So Literally. I got that out of it. But, like, oh, man, that was the worst. It was still really fun, but I was just, like, so annoyed that that even happened. <laughs> oh, oh my God. The guy himself. peeing himself so was sad. the best. Ugh. So sad, though. I've never heard of that reaction before when you're like he was an old man i mean loose bladder oh my god you know Sad. incontinent incontinent Ooh, so then he had to drive like pee pee pants the whole yeah, day pee pants he had to wait for you at the game in his pee pants yep Ugh. i mean he was in his own little compartment so he couldn't like <laughs> smell it <laughs> thank god oh wow uh good story good, good story, story. Good story um i mean yeah that's it that's do it. you have oh, any red sox stories i don't have any red sox stories but I did want to briefly talk about the fact that like why Mary has to like hide her baseball proudness like until the end. I don't know. I'm thinking about it now and I'm kind of sad about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, why did she have to do that? Like she like Henry was such a sweet kid that I feel like he would have been more excited and it would have been more attainable to him if he had known that it was his mother who had the talent. Like he's not the kind of kid that would be like, girls can't play ball. Oh, totally. not like that. But she had like made the legend of this father. So I think she felt like she couldn't be like, oh, because then she would have had to come clean about that whole thing and not know like really knowing who his dad was or I guess she knew who his dad was but it sounded like she was like a teenage pregnancy or something like Mm. that and the guy just like skipped town jerk um which she looks way too old to have had a teenage pregnancy she looked great no (laughs) stop I don't know I don't know but yeah I'm kind of pissed about that but it was really sweet it was a good moment I could feel sweetie tearing up so it was a win in my book yeah it was just such an awesome like you know son mom moment which i feel like Mm. for a baseball movie Mm. you wouldn't expect right like it was you know that's really such like a male dominated field and you have these moms who clearly are very supportive but it's not like the same thing because your mom doesn't play baseball and she never she can't because we have fucking softball we have to use a big fucking ball (laughs) what's up with that whatever guys whatever the league of their own bullshit that is right what the fuck why do we have to use the big ball i don't know seems harder to me but seems whatever um but yeah so anything else no wrapping um, it up wrapping it up up. um i just want to say this one line where i was practicing it before (laughs) yes gosh henry you could play for the cubs I'm like, why are you kid? It's like a weird hick. Um, no. Oh, so yeah, tons of large marge alum in this, by the way. Um, we, we mentioned the ones already, the, the clueless dad, 
um, the John Candy, John Candy, and then Daniel Stern, Daniel Stern, and then also little Walt buddy from Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead he is one adorable. of the friends. So cute oh and God, so and he sweet. Was such a yeah. sweetie friend. He okay. Inducting into the Sweetie Club, but we haven't done in a couple oh, yeah. episodes. Definitely, yes. little Walt buddy, whatever your name is in this, <laughs> or your real name, the sweet friend just... with your sweet little tomboy girlfriend who looks just like you, right? Who has the same haircut, <laughs> like that, like funny haircut he always has yes. in every movie. It's great. Oh my god, I love him so much. Um, but yeah, he is now in the Sweetie Club. Congratulations! Right. And then his other friend, we were convinced was related to the guy, um, just Jared, Jared Rushton. Rushton from uh, Big Billy, because they have like the same Billy and Big voice. Yeah, the it same really voice, creepy. and they look very similar, yeah. especially when Jared Rushton has blonde hair yeah. in uh, uh, Honey, I Shrunk the, the kids. kids. Yeah, I was like, is that his brother? But couldn't find any, uh, any evidence of that. I don't um, think it is. Was anybody else on the line? I feel like we. S- yeah. Kids, well, when we do girls. when we do Home Alone two, Lost in New York, the old man owner of the baseball team franchise oh. is the toy shop owner. Okay, who gets like robbed by the the bandits? Um, but yeah, who was that one baseball player? Oh, the the dad from Mean Girls. Yep. But we haven't done it. Yeah, and the guy, see the guy from Scrubs, janitor. Yeah, no, maybe not. I don't know. Mm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Good so, some goodies, but this is like right in our center of like us. You know, all these people were kind of like in all the movies all the time. Mm-hmm. So totes makes yeah sense. totes totes but anyways thanks thanks for listening you can find us on twitter at the sweetie club or on instagram at large marge sent us thanks for listening bye bye